So welcome again to this edition of Informatica Cloud Tech Tuesdays. And today we're going to be talking about sandboxes within Informatica Cloud and best practices for using a sandbox account. With me on today's session is Krupa Natarajan, who heads up cloud product management in regards to everything you see on the front end of Informatica Cloud. So a lot of the user interface elements, a lot of the Informatica Cloud uh, services that you see within the Informatica Cloud integration application is being headed by Krupa. So today's agenda, uh, we're basically going to talk about the benefits of sandboxes when it comes to integration. So why would you want to use a sandbox when creating an integration workflow? And then we're going to jump into the Informatica Cloud demo where Krupa is going to run through uh, some typical DSS and DRS task flows and how to migrate these task flows from sandbox to production. After that, we'll be having our usual summary of learnings for this Tech Tuesday session. And then uh, we're going to go into some Q&A. And we're also going to talk about next Tech Tuesday session. So let's talk about some of the benefits of why you would use sandboxes in Informatica Cloud. The three overall benefits relate to security with regards to having a streamlined integration lifecycle as well as for debugging purposes. And you'll see a lot of these in Krupa's demo today. So with regards to security, as most of you know, with Informatica Cloud, before you start running integrations, you have to download a secure agent which is powered by Vibe. And when you have different sandboxes, you can actually separate these out into different virtual LANs. So for example, if you have, let's say, a test sandbox account uh, that's targeted towards one particular LAN where the secure agent is located, and you have yet another sandbox account in another virtual LAN, what this means is you have a lot more security when it comes to performing integration in the cloud. Also, you can then separate the user access privileges into the sandbox org and the production org. And uh, this obviously gives you even more security options. With regards to your integration lifecycle, what this means is you can move between development, testing, and production stages pretty seamlessly. Because when you develop your integration workflows in the development uh, org, and then let's say you want to migrate some of them to the testing org, and then finally into production, the integration lifecycle is a lot more streamlined and smooth, and it speeds up uh, the, all your projects that you have in your pipeline. Also, let's say you finally moved some of your integration workflows into your production org, and you encounter a bug in your uh, production environment. What that means is, you will now be able to easily isolate the bug within your sandbox environment, resolve it, and then push it into production so that it does not happen in production again. And with that, I'm now going to turn over the reins to Krupa Natarajan, who's going to go through a demo of using Informatica Cloud sandboxes. So what I'm doing right now is uh, logging in as myself, and um, uh, I would be a developer that's building integrations. Um, I'll go into data synchronization, and um, I have a couple of pre-built integrations here. Uh, very simple data synchronization jobs that do uh, powerful things such as uh, moving, uh, aggregating opportunities from Salesforce, moving into a, a file system, maybe it's an extract of opportunities into a file. So I, for this particular uh, task here, I am pointing to my Salesforce demo instance, as well as I'm pointing to a local file share on my sandbox. Um, in, in this particular case, it's just a server that's running at my desk. Let me go into the details. Um, I'm not going to take too much time on how the data synchronization task itself is designed, but all I wanted to highlight is some of the connection aspects to show you that I'm pointing uh, to a, a sandbox instance. Um, I al you also notice that I have another job here. Um, so, okay, while that loaded, um, so there's, uh, this is a simple aggregate opportunities job. 
Um, I have, I'm pointing to Salesforce demo. When you view this, you will notice that I'm connecting with a particular username and password. I test the connection. Um, everything should look okay over here. Um, so there it goes. And once that's done, I have a, few, a bunch of opportunities. Um, I'm going to move them over into uh, uh, just my local desktop over here in, into a file uh, with a CSV file. And I've built the field mapping. I've built the entire integration. Um, I would run that and test it, and everything is ready to go. Um, so that's with respect to my sandbox arc. Now let me log out of this arc. Um, I'm not going to go, go ahead and run this task, which we can do well when we come back, but I'm just going to go ahead and log out of this particular org that I have. It's Maria Cloud org. And I'm going to log in as a different user, um, as a production user of Informatica Cloud. Um, so let me do that. Go ahead and log out and log in. I'm logging in as a different user. So um, in, in many cases, in many enterprises, uh, this would actually be a different person, somebody that's responsible for administration of um, your, your production integrations. Um, so um, we would assume that this is a completely different person that's the only one that has access to the, to the production org. Um, in this case, I'm just logging in with a different username. Let me go ahead and go into data synthesization jobs. I have none. Um, so in this particular case, this is the production of that that is supposed that, that is it's meant to run um, integrations in production, but I've not really created any class here. So rarely in in uh, best practices scenario would you go into a production arc and start building new integrations because we don't want to start uh, building and testing in production. Typically, what uh, our customers do and and what we recommend as best practice right. is we build okay. and test and um, test integrations in the developer dogs and then move them over into production when you're ready to go. Um, so I'm going to continue. Uh, so there are no tasks here, as I mentioned. Um, our best practices and what we've recommended to customers and also we've seen in practice is that you um, hardly develop any integrations in the production org. Um, production orgs um, typically pull in integrations that have been developed, developed and tested um, elsewhere, uh, particularly in sandbox and test box. So I have no uh, data synchronization task here. I will also go over to the task flows. There are no um, task flows over here. Um, however, I will have a few connections and, um, over here, and I'll come back and speak more about these as we go through the demo. So let, let me, um, so here's a clean slate. So I will log out, go back in as the integration developer, which will be myself. Um, I'll log in as myself. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go in and uh, show you the two integrations that I'm going, uh, going to bring in. So in the first case, um, I have particular source and target connections configured as Salesforce demo and sandbox file shares. I've particularly named them um, to indicate that these are um, non-production instances of the environment that I'm pointing to. In the second um, data synchronization task that I would migrate, you'll notice that the connection source and target connections have been named generically. Um, so they're called Salesforce and MySQL without any indication of what environment they're pointing to. Um, and I'll um, highlight what the uh, significance of either scenario is and uh, the pros and cons of naming conventions, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, and then I also have a, a task flow defined here uh, which is named CRM integration flow. And what this task flow does is it it, 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 it does a couple of different data synchronization jobs um, and accounts by territory um, job followed by a daily opportunity targets job. And I will also be pulling this task flow over into the production. So that we've seen it, I'm going to keep switching uh, roles here. So I'm back as the production administrator, um, logged in to my clean slate production org. Um, again, it's completely clean, no jobs over here. I would go into administration, and there is an option called migrate objects. Um, this is the, uh, the functionality that allows me to migrate uh, integrations and other objects from a different org into this production org. Um, you need to have an administrator privilege, um, sorry about that, you need to have administrator privileges to feed migrate objects 
under your administration tab. If you don't see that in your org, uh, talk to your Informatica Cloud org administrator and see how you can have those privileges enabled. Uh, but if you're the org administrator, you will see Migrate Objects. Once you go in here, there's the Start Migration. And the very first thing I need to do is log in to the, uh, to the Informatica Cloud org from which I'm going to um, pull in my integration chart. Now, this is very significant because we want to make sure there's security built around it, um, that our, you know, um, some, somebody's not able to either intentionally or unintentionally start pulling integrations that you have in your org into their org. So unless they have the credentials uh, to be able to access your org, that none of your information is available through the Migrate Object functionality. Uh, so again, um, I'm logging in. In this, uh, in this case, I'm logging in as the same developer user, but your org administrator could create a user that's uh, specifically intended uh, to migrate objects uh, just so those credentials are not shared um, and provide read permissions in, in the um, sandbox org for that user so that user is able to read and pull those um, integrations over into the production org. So a lot of fun, uh, security is built around that, and you can always leverage um, our fine grain access control and multiple users uh, functionality. So you don't have to share the developer's password with the production administrator that's doing the migrate object. So I've gone in and uh, logged in. It also shows the org ID, just so you make sure that that's the right sandbox from which you want to pull your um, integrations from. Now I can add objects to migrate. Um, so here um, you will see the types of objects that you can potentially migrate. So if you have data replication jobs, data assessment jobs, synchronization jobs, or even task flows, you can pull them in. So in the first um, example, I'm going to uh, click on data synchronization task, and you'll see all the available objects. Now again, I'm logged in, um, so all the privileges are preserved. So if you're logging in as a, as a user that has uh, read privileges, the view privileges, the only part of your data synchronization task, you'll only see those objects listed over here. Um, so fine grain access control is enforced all the way through. So I have the aggregate opportunities job, which is the, the, the one that I showed you earlier in my sandbox all. I'm going to select that and click OK. And what it does now in, in the back end is start uh, building um, or building all the information necessary to pull that job over. Um, so that was quick. Uh, what it da did was it pulled the aggregate opportunities, which is the data synchronization task. It also had a plugin built into it. So you see a map with aggregation because aggregation was done through a plugin. It identified that as a dependent object that needs to be migrated over itself. So it built a dependency tree. It, it took the, uh, the the maplet or the plugin. Um, it also identified a source and a uh, target connection, and it um, took those connection information as well. However, we never migrate the password and security token of any connection information. So uh, you can rest assured that if you have a connection created in one of your orgs, if you're trying to migrate that um, opportunity, uh, that integration over to another org, the password would never be migrated over. So all we have is the um, the integration uh, task details. Uh, it has the detail that it, it has a source connection and a target connection. It copies over the connection type, all of the connection information, but does not copy the password. Um, so it, at this point, it's only pulled a preview of what will get migrated. And when I actually click on OK, at that point in time, I will show a warning to say that you want to proceed with the migration. And I click OK, the migration will be in progress. So again, uh, uh, two levels built in, so you can you have a chance to validate what you're migrating before you go ahead and push the trigger to migrate those um, the integrations over. Um, while that's happening, I want to mention that what we just did is a pull of integration jobs from another org, and this is intentionally um, a, a designed as a security feature. Uh, we do not want to push um, integrations over to other orgs. Uh, the, the chances of doing, uh, you know, having some kind of a human error in those scenarios are higher. In a full scenario, you are logged in as an administrator into the org where you were um, migrating to. 
So there's tighter controls on the privileges and who can uh, get information into that org. Um, and then uh, it, it's, it's much more secure from a full perspective. Um, it should take just a few more seconds and, that, um, and those objects should be migrated over. So what you will see when the migration is complete is uh, you will see a data synchronization task appear on a production org. Uh, and when I click through the details of that data synchronization task, you will see that it has a source connection, which is still called Salesforce demo, because that's what my um, the integration that I pulled was calling it. Uh, it will have the username copied over without the password. It will have a target. Uh, there you go. It, it, it completed the migration. You have a target uh, flag file connection, which will still be called sandbox file share. And we'll see what we want to do with it. So now that's done, um, I'm going to just click Done and go on over into the data synchronization task. And now you see that aggregate opportunities uh, integration job available over here. Uh, if you go, if I uh, go ahead and open that job, you'll see Salesforce demo and Sandbox file share. I obviously don't want to, um, um, okay, so that, there's my uh, privileges enforced. So I'm logged in as a person that has uh, privileges to migrate, but no privileges to edit the task. Uh, so even better, I'm able to show you that you can keep your migrate privileges separate from your task edit privileges if you need to, and then make sure that you have tighter controls on what, what, what's happening in your production log. Um, uh, but what I would, uh, but with the key thing I wanted to highlight is, I, with edit privileges, I would be able to go in and edit the source connection, point it to a different uh, connection. So if I look into all the connections that I've previously created, I have something called Salesforce Prod uh, already created and tested in this particular org, um, and I want this integration to point to that. So I would be able to change the source to point to Salesforce Production. And I also have a production file share here, and I would be able to change the target and point to the production file share. So the same integration logic is running against my Salesforce production and, and um, production file share. Um, let me go ahead and quickly migrate uh, and the, the um, task flow so you can see how that works. And I'll log in again. In this case, um, I'm going to select the task flows. I have a CRM integration flow added to the list. Click OK. And you'll see that this integration has, uh, the, this migration has a lot more integrations involved because it detected a task flow and it detected that there are two data synchronization tasks associated with that task flow the on site territory and daily opportunity targets. Um, it identified the connections in each of those and also provided a warning saying that the, um, it, 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 the password will not be migrated. And you'll also notice another warning here that says um, that the sales, the, this particular connection uh, object will not be migrated because the target organization or the, the org to which we're pulling the integration to already contains the connection by the same name. So it's not going to override the connection. That's another key factor that when we do migrate objects, we do not override any existing objects. We only link to existing objects. So if you have a connection by the same name, we would link to it and not override it. So go ahead and click OK um, and then proceed. It will now bring uh, the task flow and both the data synchronization task and all associated connections um, with it. We go into task flows. Um, okay. And there you go. You have the uh, CRM integration flow migrated. We go into data synchronization jobs, and you will see two more um, data synchronization tasks migrated, and all three are available. Now, this is the um, uh, if uh, as a best practice, if you want to keep the source and target connection names generic, um, so you just call them Salesforce and uh, file share on your. Uh, demo instance, but they're pointing to different Salesforce org and uh, different file share. When you migrate the task over, they, uh, and if you have an existing connection by the same name, 
at its point in your production instances, then no changes are necessary. It will just get linked to the existing connection, and your task will be ready to run in your production log without any further changes. So just to quickly demonstrate it, let me bring the other data visualization task I had, which was, um, I think, opportunities to order. Let's see that. Okay. And you'll notice I have very generic source and target connection names. I'm just calling them Salesforce and MySQL. However, in my demo, all Salesforce was pointing to my demo instance of Salesforce, and MySQL was pointing to my demo instance of MySQL. In production, I already have connections defined that Salesforce and MySQL point to the production instances. So I'll go ahead and migrate this, and you'll see that it says it's not this particular connection was not migrated. The target organization had a uh, connection of the same name and just went ahead and linked those connections. Uh, the task itself, if I go into data synchronization, is actually ready to go because um, I have the opportunities to order. It's linked into Salesforce and MySQL. I already have connections by that name over here, which I'm pointing to my production instances. So my task itself is ready to, to execute, and I'll be able to just go ahead and execute it right away. Um, that actually completes my demo. Uh, I, again, the key things, um, it fails for other reasons, but um, the key thing is that this is executable, immediately available, and so on. So a couple of things that I want to, uh, as concluding remarks, want to draw attention to is uh, migrate opportun objects is an extremely helpful functionality when you are doing development on one org and pulling information over into your production or your test instances. It's been uh, designed to be very simplistic, so you have a couple of clicks and you can start migrating objects. At the same time, it's very powerful because it can um, it, it can deduce relationship, um, identify related objects, and move all related objects uh, as a single um, migrate operation. Uh, it also has a lot of security built around it, uh, starting from privileges. Unless you're an administrator, you cannot migrate. You have to be logged on to the production org, and then you have to sign into the source org from which you're migrating objects. And also applies privileges, um, access privileges, and only objects that that um, you have privilege to to view are available for migration. Uh, we also do not migrate any passwords and security tokens to make sure that your connections are not um, uh, unintentionally migrated across org boundaries. So with that, I'll turn it back to Ashwin. All right, so let's look at some of the Tech Tuesday tips for success for this week with regards to using Informatica Cloud sandboxes. So as Krupa uh, showed, one of the best practices is to separate out your different Informatica Cloud orgs into development, test, and production. Also important is to make sure that you have the proper change management processes in place to review when you want to move your objects into production, as well as how often you want to move them into production. As far as cloud applications go, let's say you're using Salesforce or uh, Microsoft Dynamics CRM Online or NetSuite or any other cloud application, make sure that you have a sandbox account for each application as well in order to further segment out your dev, test, and production processes. So with that, we have now come to the Q&A session of Tech Tuesdays, and uh, there are a few questions in the chat panel. Uh, the first one here I see, Kripa, is do you have the ability to migrate schedules? That's a great question. Uh, the answer is no, we do not. Uh, the, the reason why we, uh, we, uh, we do not migrate schedules is it's very likely that your schedules and production are different from your schedules in uh, development or test environment. For example, a developer could, could be running a particular job every five minutes just to generate a whole lot of uh, logs or to put it through a stress condition and, and so on. Um, and you typically don't want to just move that schedule over to production and, and, and leave it running in, that, in the same schedule. Um, so we allow the production administrator to manage their own schedules in the production environment, and we do not move schedules between uh, the environments. Great. The um, next question here is about uh, multiple test orgs. So 
let's say you have a main production org and you have multiple different uh, sandbox orgs. The object migration that you showed, is that just strictly a one-to-one mapping or can you migrate objects from several different sandboxes into a main production sandbox org? The main production org. Okay, that's, a, that's a great question again. And it's a very typical scenario that we see with many of our customers where they have more than one development uh, org or test org and uh, possibly one production org only. So you have a many-to-one situation. Uh, very easily. So uh, the, what you would have noticed during my demo is I'm logged on to the production org when I start the migration, and, and, and then I'm able to pull integrations over from a particular source org um, over to production. So I can pull integrations from multiple source uh, orgs into the same production org by logging in uh, to those different sandbox orgs. Um, so even though the at the time of object migration, you're pulling from one sandbox arc at a time. We do not have any restrictions that say uh, one production arc can only migrate objects from a particular sandbox and not from more than one sandbox. So you can very well log in from your production to different sandbox arcs and start pulling um, integrations over. Excellent. Thanks for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and one thing is if I want to add to that, um, sorry, Ashwin. Uh, if I may add to that, um, in, in cases where uh, it, it, uh, this is very different from a scenario where uh, a, a developer may be uh, developing integrations for the community to consume, um, in which case they are posting it on our marketplace um, and it's publicly available, any you know, administrator can then start pulling it in. Or in cases where you may have an ICC or um, a, a integration competency center or uh, which is building integrations and making that available to multiple orgs. So at, at this point in time, you can still achieve this, uh, the same results in the case of ICC or partner-built integrations, which are consumed by multiple uh, uh, customers. You could still achieve them by uh, pulling those integrations from the customer org. Uh, the customer has more control of when they want to pull the integrations in. Um, and when they're ready to consume those integrations. But we're also working uh, on, um, you know, with, with the marketplace, we already have like a publicly shareable uh, environment where you can do a, a large publish and then you know, individual logs can start pulling um, information in. So even though uh, th this is a mechanism by which you pull from particular org, uh, there is no barrier to having, you know, a shareable integration either or publicly or the community or privately between a particular org hierarchy. Excellent. Uh, so Krupa, there's a question here from a Salesforce user. So uh, this user has not only a Salesforce uh, production account, but also a Salesforce sandbox account. And the question is around um, uh, migrating objects from, let's say, Informatica Cloud Sandbox org that's mapped to the Salesforce Sandbox account, and let's say they're testing out their integrations there, how would they then push that to not only the main Informatica Cloud production account, but also the main Salesforce production account? All right. Um, so if I may rephrase the question, Ashwin. Um, so they, they want to keep they keep their application um, environments educated into sandbox and production, as well as corresponding in, in to great, um, Informatica cloud orgs and environments segregated into sandbox and production. Um, yes, that's correct. Right? Yeah. Okay. Again, um, that, that, that is the best practice, and that is what we recommend. Um, so if you're in, integrating with uh, SaaS applications, particularly um, like Salesforce, NetSuite, and so on, um, you typically do have sandbox um, account, accounts in those SaaS applications. Um, and we, we recommend that you mirror the same kind of architecture on your Informatica Cloud site. Um, so you have an, a sandbox Informatica Cloud org and production org. Um, also, what is key is, um, and, and the short answer to the question is yes, you, you would be able to do that. 
and uh, keep your sandbox connections to your sandbox uh, SaaS applications like Salesforce um, and so on in your Informatica Cloud Sandbox org and production connections in your production org. Um, also, what, what is key is in many cases when you're doing an on-premise to cloud integration, um, you may have on-premise databases or applications that are in a particular uh, test VLAN in your network um, architecture. And you, in, in most customer uh, scenarios, your production databases, your production file shares, your production um, applications, on-premise applications that you're connecting to are uh, segregated in, in your network architecture into a separate VLAN and a separate uh, network environment. Um, so in, in cases like that, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's key that you know, have a secure agent for your test, um, in, uh, test Informatica Cloud org that's installed within your test network, um, which has access into your test databases and your uh, test file share and um, on-premise applications, and you're running your integrations from there. And your production Informatica Cloud org could be associated with an, a production secure agent that is running within your production segregation of your network, which has access uh, to your production databases and production file shares and production on-premise applications. So even from a network architecture uh, um, level, ground up, you could have your environment segregated all the way from network to your secure agents to Informatica Cloud Orgs and your uh, SaaS applications that you're connecting to. Excellent, Krupa. And just one last question since we are about eight minutes uh, over time. Uh, this question is about uh, connection names. So the question here is, let's say you've named a connection to your test sandbox org, and you have the mm -hmm. same connection name in your production org of Informatica Cloud. So will that connection then be overwritten as a consequence? It's a great question, and um, it's something that I showed in my demo as well. We do not overwrite anything in, in the org to which you're migrating to. Um, so if you have a connection by the same name in your production org, uh, in, this, in the last integration that I migrated, I had named my connections just Salesforce and MySQL. They were pointing to different Salesforce instances in MySQL instances in the sandbox and production org, but we do not overwrite. We only uh, reuse. So if you, we find a connection by... Uh, and that name already existing, the, the integration that gets migrated is now relinked to use that connection in the production org. So you, you won't have anything over it. Excellent. Thank you very much for that, Krupa, and thank you for uh, to all attendees for joining us on today's Tech Tuesday session. So we will see you again next week uh, for Tech Tuesdays, and the topic is going to be on cloud data masking. Thank you again, and see you next week.